We've got our friends! Yay! We've got our snacks! Woo! Oh, you know what that means! It's game night! Hang on for the loop! Three, two, one. I'm Ricky! I'm Jamie, and these are our friends! Hey, friends. <laughs> I'm Aisha. I'm Madison. And I'm Kate. And Jamie and I are hosting game night! Yay! It's a fun way to celebrate. Yeah, what's something that y'all like to celebrate? Christmas. Yes. Mm. New Year's Eve, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completing a project. Yay, nice. good thinking. Very good. Celebrating is joy in full volume. Yeah, it can be uh, celebrating a team or uh, yelling surprise at a friend's birthday party. Yes, or laughing so hard you pee in your pants. <laughs> Uh, I know, it happens. <laughs> it is hard to keep a straight face when you are celebrating something. Jesus says that when we abide in his love, we can be full of joy. You know, when I think about full volume joy, there's one Loop Show name that comes to mind. Ah, I think we're all thinking the same thing. So let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Quiz quiz quiz! Quiz! Ah, it's time for the quiz thing. Shh, quiet. There's a baby here. I have a baby now. Let's talk about babies. Why do people call babies a bundle of joy? There's nothing joyful about them. They cry, they smell like salami, and they don't answer your quiz question. What? Is it A, B, C, or D, baby? Hey, wait, this isn't a baby. <gasps> this is a sub sandwich. Oh, that's a bundle of joy. <laughs> As babies, we know how to make some noise. We start laughing before we can even form words. <laughs> and it's one of our earliest expressions of how we experience the world. Baby laughter is the best, don't get me wrong. It is so great that I made it my ringtone. I love baby laughter. You know who else loves baby laughter? Who? The director of London's Polka Theater, Sarah Argent, she loved baby laughter so much that she made a play designed specifically for toddlers. What was the name of that play? Was it A, Tickles and Giggles, B, Peekaboo Street, C, Shake, Rattle, and Roll, or D, Hamlet for Babies. I mean, we all know it's not D, but that'd be pretty great, right? To be or not to be. Quiet, babies. Quiet, baby. It's C. Shake, Rattle, and Roll was a 45-minute play designed specifically for toddlers. And she used the research of a man named Casper Addyman, who studies baby laughter for a living. That's what this guy does. Sarah use this research and she discovered that there's one thing that she could do before every single show to make sure that the baby stayed engaged. What was that one thing that she did? Was it A, use bubble machines, B, speak only in gibberish, C, meet every baby before the show, or D, move around a lot? Which one was it? What did she do before every single show to make sure they stayed engaged? If you said A, bubble machines only go so far. You can't do bubbles for 45 minutes. Bubbles, <laughs> it's C. She met every single baby before the show, looked them in the eyes and introduced herself, said, I'm Sarah, how are you? Nice bib, thanks for coming. Hi, baby. Because do you know what we found is a crucial part of baby laughter? Sharing. A shared experience. They want to know that someone else is sharing the laugh with them. In fact, kids laugh eight times more when there's somebody laughing with them than they do when they're alone. It's something that we know even from a young age that it's not just the joke, it's the joining in. There's one other thing that I found in my research. Neuroscientists discovered that our brains recognize screams of joy faster than screams of fear. In other words, if we hear a sound of discomfort, it can be hard for us to place what it is, but we instantly recognize a sound of joy. Isn't that cool? It would make sense that God would wire us this way because he loves shouts of joy. He loves it when we're loud in our celebrations about what he's doing in our life. And let's be real. Not all of us are loud mouths. He also loves the quiet things too. He loves a quiet thanks for an answered prayer. He also knows that sometimes joy looks like tears. That's okay. What matters is that we're sharing it with him and with others, that we're joining in together. When we follow Jesus, joy follows us. It's something that follows us around. It's a fruit of the spirit. And even when people can't put words to it, they see it because we were all created to recognize joy, to want joy, and to join in when we find it. So let's do that. Let's invite people into our joy. Let's have some loud celebrations. Let's have some quiet thanks. Let's have all kinds of joy. Let's be bundles of joy. I'm the quiz man, goodbye. <laughs> what is that? That's my phone. Hello?
Yes, I got the sub sandwich. Yes, thank you for swaddling. Today, we are going to be playing a game called Celebration Speculation. Mm -hmm. okay? okay, so written on these slips of paper are interesting ways to celebrate something. One person will leave the room mm -hmm. and everyone else in the room will draw one slip of paper from the bowl to see how they are all celebrating. The person out of the room will re-enter and announce mm -hmm. some news. Everyone will celebrate based on what the slip of paper said. Now, the person who is out of <laughs> the room will have to figure out how everyone is celebrating. Does everyone get the game? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Jamie has left, so. Celebrate like someone keeps muting and unmuting your celebration. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got my braces off! <laughs> this is confusing. It's almost like you're only celebrating when like something is going by. <laughs> I made a new friend! You waspily rabbit! <laughs> Thank you for celebrating my cartoon character. Wow. I got class president! Wait, I was that the monitor? Wow. Are we whisper celebrating? Did you hear? Did you hear oh. something? Sorry. Is it crying? I made my own sandwich. They're hiding. Congratulations! Um, yeah. Yay! Are they are they scared of their own celebration? Yeah! Ah, 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 ah. Being in a good mood is really great, and most languages have lots of words to describe the experience, like happy, cheerful, joyful, and so on. The same goes for the languages of the Bible. In ancient biblical Hebrew, there's a variety of words, like simcha, sason, or gil. In the Greek New Testament, there's kara, euphrasune, or agaliasis. Each word has its own unique nuance, but they all basically refer to the feeling of joy and happiness. Now, what makes these biblical joy words interesting is noticing the kinds of things that bring happiness and also seeing how joy is a key theme that runs through the whole story of the Bible. Let's start with sources of joy. On page one of the Bible, God says that this world is very good. And so naturally, people find joy in beautiful and good things of life, like growing flocks or an abundant harvest on the hills. People find joy at a wedding or in their children. There's even a Hebrew proverb that compares the joy that perfume brings to your nose with the joy a good friend brings to your heart. However, human history isn't just a joy fest. The biblical story shows how we live in a world that's been corrupted by our own selfishness. It's marked by death and loss. And this is where biblical faith offers a unique perspective on joy. It's an attitude God's people adopt not because of happy circumstances, but because of their hope in God's love and promise. So when the Israelites were suffering from slavery in Egypt, God raised up Moses to lead them into freedom. And the first thing the Israelites did was sing for joy. Even though they were in the middle of a desert, they were vulnerable, the promised land was still far away, they rejoiced anyway. This is why it's significant that when Jesus of Nazareth was born, it was announced as good news that brings great joy. We're told that Jesus himself rejoiced and gave thanks to God his Father when he began to announce the kingdom of God. He even taught his followers the same joy in the wilderness, saying, when people reject you or persecute you for following me, rejoice, be very glad, because your reward is great in heaven. After his death and resurrection, Jesus commissioned his followers to go out and announce the good news that he was the risen king of the world. And as they did so, the early Christian communities were known for being full of joy, even when they were persecuted. Like when the apostle Paul was sitting in a dirty Roman in prison, he could say that he's chosen joy, even if he gets executed. He called this the joy of faith or joy in the Lord. He believed it was the gift of God's spirit, a sign that Jesus' presence is with you, inspiring hope in the midst of hardship. And when you believe that Jesus' love has overcome death itself, joy becomes reasonable in the darkest of circumstances. Now, this doesn't mean that you ignore or suppress your sorrow. That's not healthy or necessary. Paul often expressed his grief about missing loved ones or losing friends or his own freedom. He called it being full of sorrow and yet rejoicing. As he acknowledged his pain, he also made a choice to trust 
Jesus, that his loss wouldn't be the final word. This is very different from the trite advice to turn that frown upside down. Christian joy is a profound decision of faith and hope in the power of Jesus' own life and love. And that's what biblical joy is all about. Hey guys, welcome back to The Loop Show. My name is Reagan. Today I'm taking you along on my little adventure. Right now we are parked and I'm gonna get myself a nice milkshake. Not sure what flavor I want yet, but milkshakes make me really happy. And so I drove um, to get myself so I drove to get myself a milkshake today because it just sounded really good. Milkshakes are probably like the fastest way to put me in a good mood. Guys, look at this. I think everyone has something in their head that's like, oh, like if I get a new toy, I'm in a good mood. If I, um, I don't know, get to see a new movie, I'm in a good mood. Like, what is it that makes you happy? What is it that makes you like automatically happy? Happiness is like an emotion, right? It comes, it goes. Sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're sad. It doesn't really last that long. It comes from things like milkshakes and roller coasters. It comes from fun things, but nothing that lasts that long. I think that joy is more something that is constant, something that stays around. It doesn't matter what happens around you. It doesn't matter how good it is, how bad it is. It just stays. Okay, so listen. I do have a secret though. You're not gonna be happy all the time. Unfortunately, I wish that that's the way that it was. But just because you're not happy all the time doesn't mean you can't be joyful all the time. Two separate things, right? Being joyful all the time means that you know that you have joy because of Jesus. Being happy just means that you're having great circumstances all the way around you all the time. And that doesn't always have to be the case. One of my favorite verses ever is John 10.10. 10. It says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have life to the full. That's Jesus saying that he came to give us life to the full. Life to the full means life full of joy always, no matter when good or bad things happen. Life to the full means a life where we're like, not just happy, but we're joyful and excited about life because of the gift that Jesus gave us. My favorite author, Bob Goff, says it something like this. Whatever you're searching for, Jesus is better. And I honestly think that he's right. Whatever we're looking for to give us happiness, whatever we're trying to get to to make us happier, Jesus is better than that. I believe that true joy is only found in Jesus. Round two, here we go. Celebrate by trying really hard not to dance, but you keep failing. <laughs> yeah! 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 This is so hard. Yeah. Oh, uh. So proud of you. Oh, oh, it's a dance marathon. Ah! Yeah. No. So proud of you. Yeah. You guys are like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, and you need to be oiled. Ah! Keep forgetting what you're celebrating. I made the team. Good. You read a book. Team. She made tea. Sweet so or un sweet. Yeah, sweet or un sweet. You, you, um, you did. You, you keep yeah. forgetting what I say. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. I got new shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Are we cowboys? Are we in a rodeo? Yes. Yeah. Wow. No cavity. like you're in a band. Yeah! 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 Nice! <laughs> the more you celebrate, the more you get stuck to the floor. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. I tried a new food <gasps> and I liked it. Yay! Yay! Oh my gosh. Oh. What did you try? <sighs> oh. Oh. oh, I'm so proud. So proud of you. We're so oh. proud of you. Oh. Guys, help. Yay. Help. Oh. Hey. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. We're so happy for you. Is gravity pulling you to the ground? I'm so sorry. I feel really bad celebrating right now. Oh, you got you, glue. You got stuck to the ground. Yay! If you keep, if you keep, if you keep my commandments, you will abide. You will abide.
So today, we're talking about joy. Today is all about joy. And where does joy come from? Joy comes from abiding in God's love. Jesus says in John 15, 9, abide in my love. Now, what does that even mean? Abide? That's a weird word, right? Well, another word for abide is the word remain or stay. So what Jesus is talking about is remaining in his love, staying in his love, nonstop living in his love. And where does this love come from? It comes from knowing that God is with us and that we are with God. You see, everything you need to know is right here. God knows you, God loves you, and he sent his son Jesus to show us what it looks like to abide in his love. And so when we remain in love, when we abide in love, we are so filled with it that it overflows into everything we do, into our actions, into the way we talk. And so you'll find yourself doing things that people don't ask you to do. Like maybe you'll start doing chores around the house, or maybe you'll start sitting next to that kid who always sits alone at lunch, or maybe you'll start inviting people to come to church so that way they can hear about God's love. God's love always changes us from the inside out. And when we are filled with this love, then we're also filled with joy. Celebration speculation is an easy game for you to play at home. All you need are things to celebrate. And there are so many things, but something that makes us shop for joy is God loves you and knows you! Yay! Whether you celebrate out loud or quiet with a big smile, be sure to share God's joy with your friends this week. This one says, celebrate like you're on a roller coaster. Okay, everyone got it? Yes, okay, okay on the count of three. All right, one, two, three. Enjoy the ride! This week, we've been talking about joy. And for all of us, it's really easy to get distracted by the things that the world offers us that promise us joy. But you see, true joy, it comes from God and spending time with Him. So this week, I challenge you to make space for God and let Him fill you up with true joy. Whether that's taking a walk or reading your Bible or creating a list of things that you're thankful for, Making space for God will bring you true joy. Let's pray. God, thank you that you love to give us joy. I pray this week we would make space for you and experience what it looks like to have true joy in you. In Jesus' name, amen. The world can promise us joy, but true and lasting joy comes from God alone. <laughs>